because I'm joined in the studio by Simon Wardell. He's head of oil forecasting at IHS Global Insights, specializing on the impact of geopolitical risks on supply and demand. So what's behind the price movements that we've been seeing? Is it just geopolitical risk? Well, I think it is, because at the moment we still have a supply and demand situation in the market, which, which we, have, we have enough supply and we have spare capacity out there. But we've got to try and uh, integrate those risks that we have to further supply disruptions. We obviously have Libya. I think that's essentially been priced in for a, a, mm. a very prolonged uh, now disruption. But we're Priced trying to, in like for the rest of this year? I think so. I think, I think over the weekend we saw it bounce up and I think that's because people thought that you know Libyan oil is now going to be out for a little longer than we initially anticipated. Uh, but we have those other risks in the region which, which are difficult to price because the risks are so extreme and, and the low light likelihood of disruption from some of the Gulf states. But of course, if we have mm. a disruption, mm. it's a significant impact on the overall balance. And that's precisely the problem, isn't it, right now? There is so much uncertainty. As I was saying to Lara, it's such an unpredictable situation. We've got airstrikes going on in Libya, but actually the situation in Yemen, next door to Saudi, is escalating as well. Well, yeah, we've got a situation in Yemen, which is potentially quite, uh, quite important. It borders Saudi Arabia, of course, but also it's on the coast and there are shipping lanes that go through there. Uh, so we have to see what happens happens there to see if, if we can get some stability in the country uh, at some point. That's a, another risk that's, uh, that's out there. So there's a lot of supply risks at the moment in the Middle East. You're forecasting $105 a barrel for the rest of the year, but plenty of upside risk to that. Oh, I think so. I mean, we've had to revise up. Uh, it's difficult to balance this whole thing because we've got Japan where immediate mm. oil consumption has dropped, but it's probably going to pick yeah. up later in the year as they start to, to rebuild and start to try and offset the nuclear reactors. Uh, but then we also have issues with uh, supply and mm. demand right now looks perfectly fine. We have plenty of supply out there, but we have these big risks. So from what you're saying, $105 a barrel is the optimistic scenario. So how, what's the worst case scenario? How high could we go? Well, obviously, it depends what happens in the Gulf. I mean, there's potential disruptions there, then we could see prices go much, much higher. It's, it's difficult to put a number on it. I know, but if you had to. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot higher than they are now, maybe up to 140, 150. 220 if, and if Saudi goes. Well, I mean, if Saudi... Because, you know, a lot of people are saying we didn't think this would happen anywhere in the Middle East. Just the fact that it's happening in Yemen, Libya, Tunisia, Egypt, unprecedented events. Why can't it spread to Saudi? Already trouble in the east of the country where they have the largest oil refinery in the world? Yeah, I think Saudi is a bit of a different case, but not Nonetheless, obviously, there is a risk there. And, and if we did see some disruption to Saudi, then I think uh, even, even beyond the actual supply outage, we'd see a huge premium put on the price simply because Saudi Arabia is such an important exporter. Uh, so that's obviously out there as a risk that people are trying to understand how you price that into the market right now. If prices remain high, which you're forecasting, it sounds from what you're saying, they will, what does that mean for the global economy, the recovery? Well, obviously, it, it, it's, it's a bit of a tax on consumers, a tax on consumption. A, a lot of the money that could be spent in, uh, in, in helping to support the economy from consumers in the West is going to go on energy costs. And, of course, we've got inflationary uh, aspects coming in through uh, the increased prices to all sorts of things. The energy complex increases, the cost of transport increases. So it's going to lower our expectations for growth this year. At the moment, it's not at a critical level, I think, that's going to really really push things backwards, but uh, of course the higher it gets, the worse that problem becomes. Who will be hardest hit? Well, it'll be mainly consumers, Western consumers and also Western Asian consume, consumers, yeah. uh, countries which rely on natural resources for a large part of their economy. Obviously, the producers are, are going to benefit to some degree, uh, those that are not immediately affected by what's been happening politically in the Middle East. So we're looking at countries like Russia and, uh, and some of the other African oil producers. You know, great to talk about what's going on in the Middle East and indeed the implications beyond the region itself. Simon Wardell, Energy Research Manager, IHS Global Insight. Thanks for coming in.